Hi guys, Dizus here. After some delay I'm ready to proceed with my part 8 of my complete water cooling guide and today I will talk about how to select your radiator. This is probably one of the top three questions I get asked uh, if this radiator size will cool blah 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 and things like this. So um, let me simplify the selection for you as I see it and also before we even start I would like to give you two important uh, points that are related to selection of the radiator. Point number one. You will see a lot of different names um, of radiator makers, but really most of them coming from the same manufacturer in China. So while you see different names, AK, TFC, XSPC, they're all coming from the company called Major Cool. So don't sweat too much about uh, radiators uh, manufacturer. Uh, there's little differences between, between them, but really they come from the same bucket. So if you if you really want to go into details, you're welcome to read the forums and different testings like Skinny Lab uh, has a comparison between different models. But in my opinion, this a little bit of uh, hair splitting. Uh, I would just go uh, with whatever is available and um, what the price point is and in most cases you will get more or less the same results. But anyways, uh, this is point one. The point two, when you select your radiator, you cannot look into it separate from the fan selection because your cooling performance coming from two factors. One factor is how big is your rod. So the bigger your radiator surface, more heat you take can take away and uh, the better performance. Very straightforward, no magic here. But second, also the speed of the air going through the radiator also affects performance. The, the higher speed is going through, the more heat you take away. So faster fans will give you better performance, slower fans will give you less performance. And for the radiator, bigger one is a more performance, smaller one of the uh, will be less. So the selection of proper choice for you is a balance between the size of the radiator and spin of the fans. And you can play with it. If you're looking for the very silent build, you maximize size of your radiator as much as you can and minimize the speed of your fans as much as you can. So you get acceptable performance. If you're looking for straight performance like oriented as much as you can. You maximize both. Both sizes as big as better and speed of the fan as high as better. Simple as this. Right? So if you're looking for the uh, lowest cost, in this case you try to uh, go with the just cheapest versions and probably the smallest possible and you might want to minimize size of radiator a little bit safer for the money and maybe maximize speed of your fans. So uh, you can get out of the ch smaller red more than from the bigger one. So you see it, it's, it's a question of balance, okay? So now when we establish two items that most of radiators is pretty much the same thing and second you also need to look for the fans in conjunction of your cho uh, cho choice of, of the radiator we can look actually for radiator as well. First of all let's have a look what the rod is. Rad is, is just a bunch of pipes with the fins welded to them and you have water coming in, water coming out and uh, when the air going through the, this device is get heated by, uh, by those fins and you cool your water. So as simple as this. The difference between the rods is mostly about the size of it in both directions, actually in three directions, it can be one fan, two, three, so it's, it's more fans and the longer the radiator is. Second, the size of the fan. Uh, you, you can actually find even really weird size radiators, but most likely you will see either fan, uh, radiator for 120 millimeter fans, like this one, or slightly bigger radiator for 140 millimeter fans. And uh, so to demonstrate you the difference, um, there's two boxes. So you see the, the, this is the back, uh, black box for 140 and it's 120, so, so it's, it's a little bit uh, like a smaller radiator for 120. 
So, other things that you need to look, except the, how long it is and how wide it is, and on the thickness. So the radiator comes with different thickness. The smaller radiator, like the slim ones, uh, will be ha have a little bit less performance. The more surface you get, if you get it thicker, um, like like this one, almost twice as thicker, you you can get better performance because you have a more uh, surface that get washed with your air going through it. Okay, so now how steel? The question stands: How to select it? I use a simple rule: one water block means one single fan radiator. So let's say if I have one CPU block in my system and that's it. The bare minimum I can get away is a simple single radiator. That's why what you have in most pre-filled solutions. You have everything integrated and you have one little single rod that sits on the exhaust of your case. There's a bare minimum. You might get performance close to high-end air sink, but it works. So anything else, you start increasing size of the rod, you either gain more performance or you make more silent build. So as simple as this. Now, when you start adding your graphical cards, it's again, one graphical card, at least another piece of radiator. So let's say one graphical card, one CPU. Your minimum choice is dollar rod. Simple as this. So if you get more cards, three, two cards and one, one CPU, your minimum choice became triple rat and so forth and so, so on. The only exception in, in my rule is I think that when you use a um, cooling for motherboard because the not amount of heat coming off motherboard is so little you basically can ignore it in my opinion. So let's say you have a motherboard plus CPU still can go with a single rat somewhat. Now if you're looking for performance and for the uh, or silence, you just go with a minimum and build on it. So the bigger rod you will get, the more performance and more silent build you can achieve. So let's say you have one CPU and you go with a triple, you can go with the really slow fans and get the same results as a single. Very simple, right? So I stop, uh, I stop elaborating on this. So what is other important things for selection of rod is a uh, lot of uh, components that can help you with your performance. First of all, you select your radiator, you need to select your fans. With fans also, performance coming from this few things. One is the speed of fan, which is obvious, and second is the thickness of the fan, because the thicker fan have a bigger shovel, can grab more air, push more air through. So the very, very typical fan that most people are using is a 25 millimeter standard 120 fan that attach other side. I also ask push pull. I would say for majority of the people, uh, the difference is basically is, is the same again. So it's only start playing very low speed, very high speed. So for majority of people, whatever size you put your fan it will be the same result. So, so just do it as it's easier for you to mount inside of the, your case. One thing that can help a little bit with your performance is putting a sandwich radiator between two levels of fans which is called pull, pull, pull solution. So you have one fan on one side, you have other fan on the other side and you just push air through the system. And the, so you get a little bit better characteristic, push more air and this obviously get you some gain in your performance sizes. So speaking about um, fans again, so 25 millimeter is bare minimum you can start. You get a little bit better performance with uh, 38 millimeter fans and um, they can be very expensive ones like from the Deltas or from um, Sun Ace uh, or they can actually can be pretty cheaper ones coming from coolants and another generic uh, manufacturers uh, and uh, there's a few like fans like tribe rags which has extreme thickness and um, they're like 55 millimeters what you need to keep in mind when you um, choose your fans and your radiator 
that when you mount the radiator inside of the case, you have a space constraint. So if you um, put like a thick rod and put a thick fan on top, you, you might have used too much space, so your fans will interfere, let's say, with your CPU or your memory uh, module. So make sure you measure and make um, you have enough space from the top of the case to the let's say to the to the motherboard or whatever other direction you're mounting so so when you select those two keep in mind what kind of case you use and you have a space right so another um, so fans we get it so we choose size we choose speed that we need whatever we're going after and um, and and we choose it so one thing that I strongly recommend to look on the radiators of, of, of this design, the fins is very, very soft. So uh, if you poke it with your finger, you will bend fins and they're really, really hard to put back. So um, it's easy to handle it when you just, you know, do nothing. But if you start mounting it, it's a very good chance that you, you bend fins. So I would say that it's a very good idea that cost you only one buck. Um, is a uh, is a get some some grills that you put uh, on your radiator and you protect um, radiator from accidental damage because usually you have fans fans on one side that protects your rod uh, by the fan but the other side if you don't use push pull configuration those uh, grills is, is a really good idea and sa save you a little bit trouble uh, with a damaging radiator. Next thing is um, in case you have no space inside and you will be going to mount radiator uh, outside of the case, you need some sort of mounting mechanism, which usually called uh, radiator like rod boxes, and uh, it's some sort of plastic or can be metal sort of brackets that get screwed either to radiator itself or to the fans, like here. And so that allows you to screw this box to the outside of the case on top and on the back and the rest of things get attached to it. So in this case you, you, you can do external mount. And um, there's a few models of this. Another option, um, slightly different from the uh, radiator uh, brackets, is a radiator stand like this XSPC product. So you see you have uh, some sort of legs and the uh, machine can put on top of the case or what, whatever direction you need. So, so on those bra brackets get screwed to radiator and that helps you to with external mount um, in whatever place you put your rod. That's, uh, that's another option that you look when you do external mount. Uh, another piece of accessory I'd like to mention is a shroud. Shroud is a just basically a spacer for your fans. So when you have your radiator and you have fans attached to it, um, there's a certain dead zone between radiator and uh, and your fans that uh, air doesn't go efficiently. And uh, when you have a little bit distance between radiator and fan, you get a little bit better characteristics and you can have a little bit better performance. So uh, some fans consider it to be uh, integration between fan and um, and shroud, like this trapper fan. But lots of people just using the shroud to get a little bit punch in performance side with the traditional fans. One thing keep in mind again: if you use shroud, make sure that you have enough space for everything that you assemble together. Okay. So, selection of radiator is really simple. Count your components and uh, that's to determine what size you have. And after that you can see what you can fit. If you can fit 120mm or 140mm and how thick the rod is. And next coming comparison between money. So very simple. It's not that complex. Um, only one thing I would like to mention in the end that you need to be aware of. Uh, different uh, models have a um, when the radiator get get manufactured there's a, some stuff inside um, 
called flux um, that helps with the producing radiator. So <clears throat> you have to wash it out, otherwise it get, um, gets stuck on your blocks and stuff like this. Some of the rods had, uh, they seemed like a little bit less of this stuff, some rods had a little bit more. Uh, the most notorious radiators that have most of the flux and get most of the trouble uh, to the users is a thermochill radiator. So, so make sure if you get thermochill, you definitely like, like flush it with hot water and whatever other uh, remedies you can find trying to get rid of it. Um, if you don't want to deal with that, you might look on uh, different models um, like um, with our XSPC, K, they have a little bit less of this stuff and usually simple hot water flush will get rid of it and um, you know, less tr trouble for you. Other than that, there's nothing else to be said about uh, radiator's choice, it's one of the simplest components uh, and um, just choose the size that required for your cooling uh, preferences, silence or performance, potentially both, and uh, you're ready to go. And I'm coming back with more videos soon.